There's three things that I judge a good brisket by. What are they? Number one, tenderness. Number two, smoky flavor. Number three, is it Beagle approved? Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, you're gonna learn something in this brisket video on how to do brisket right. I am gloved up and ready to go. We are fixing to do surgery. What are we gonna do it on? A brisket. If you think these gloves is pretty thick, it is 39 degrees, so I have me a layer underneath. Folks, if I had a nickel for every one of these I'd seen in the last 30 something years of cooking, I wouldn't have to cook no more. And when I started buying brisket to put on the smoker, I can remember buying some for 13 cents a pound. Now, I'm gonna show you as we go through this deal what's all gonna happen. But this is a 16 pound Packer brisket, a whole thing. Not just a flat, not just the cap, it is the whole brisket. Now, we're gonna trim a bunch of this fat off there, but I don't want you to get that fat cap on the back down to plumb nothing. We gotta leave some of that on there. Now, a lot of you have probably cooked a lot of brisket, but stay with me, whether you're, this is your first one or this is your 9,428th one to put on a smoker, we're gonna have some tips for all of you and some tricks that's gonna make this brisket better tasting, more tender, and it'll be the what? The hit of the brisket parade. Yes, it will, it will be and good. The pups? Pups love some brisket, they do. Why do I think you need to buy the whole brisket? Well, first of all, you're gonna get that combination of a good fat to a more leaner cut of meat. But when you buy a flat, you're paying more for it. And if you buy a brisket that's untrimmed, you're saving money because you can trim a brisket at home. So let's just take some of this off. Not all of it, like I said, just some of it. You can see we got a little of that meat, but that's fine. Don't think any of this is going to waste because it's not. Mostly too, I like to try to take off anything that's really a shiny, wet fat. It won't render as quickly down and go through that brisket. So this is a 15 pound brisket that I'm gonna get a really good 10 to 12 servings out of here. But this thing's gonna draw up, it's gonna shrink. Always figured when I was catering, it's a third of a pound of meat per and when it's finished per person. If you're chopping this to make taco meat, you know, brisket makes some great tacos. If you're just slicing this and just have brisket on a plate, or if you're even what, getting this all chopped up, putting it back in a skillet, frying it up a little like carnita, there's so many different uses for it, but hey, just make sure you cook it right. Well, first I'm gonna turn it over, Shan, if that's all right. And I wanna show folks, I'll turn it this way, you can see really let me pull it out here where you get eye there's a little bit of like you can just see grisly meat right here and you can see a line that comes back into where there's actually just straight brisket meat so i always like to take that and trim it off as well but also now we're going to turn it this way and let you look see how much thinner that really gets right there than the rest of this i like to square this end up just a tad take this off just a little bit to sort of even that up. But I wanna show you under here how deep that fat goes. I like to come back in here, cut this at an angle, and you can sort of peel it out of there that way, and then just trim the top right off of it, and you can see that we got most of that cleaned up. So let's move around here to the cap end of this, and I want you to see this excess of fat that's running here. All that is not gonna cook and render down. Let's take that knife, Go back in there, you can see we still got fat. Just pull that a little. You can see how that fat cap up here in this big roll just sort of had that all humped up. Well now, it'll let that brisket actually lay a little flatter. But I want you to look right here as well. Remember we turned that, trimmed that meat off right there. We gotta do the same to this piece here. So we're just gonna go back in here trim this up to where we're really getting down to fresh, good meat right there. So folks, I would call this trimmed enough for me and ready to go. So let's talk about seasoning. You wanna season this well. It's a big piece of meat, so it's gonna take a lot of seasoning. But I do like to combine our original seasoning with our mesquite seasoning 
Folks, you can use seasoned salt, black pepper, garlic powder, or you can just use coarse ground black pepper, kosher salt, and garlic powder. Uh, I really like that this has a little bit of citrus in it that really needs because it, it sort of helps more of that break down right there and gonna make it a little more tender. And folks, we are in luck today. The good Lord has blessed us. Watch the way this seasoning falls. There is no wind. That never happens. It don't never happen in Oklahoma when you're trying to film. Make sure everybody is covered well. Give it a good pat. And you, you see a lot of folks that are, they'll say, Oh, I need a binding agent that I'm gonna put with this to get this to hold the seasoning on the meat. If this was a really, really tough brisket, I would probably go back and use lime juice and rub it in, let it set a little while, let it soak down in that meat and then go back to it. But some folks gonna put like olive oil on there, avocado oil, you don't need that. We're gonna let this meat set up, let it draw some of that moisture to it, let it suck down there in that meat because when you put a binding agent on there or something like mustard, it's hard for that to penetrate. I love to always season the flat side first. And then when we turn this over, this is the way it will actually go on the grill, fat side up. Why? When that's cooking, that way them meat juices and that fat juice can penetrate and go down. It's called osmosis of the fat moses, I think is what it's fat called. Moses. Fat moses. That way you can get all that season in there. You may think, oh my gosh, that is a lot of seasoning. Remember folks, so many times people make mistakes of under seasoning a piece of meat, especially if it's a great big piece of meat. So make sure you get it seasoned well. And you're thinking, now we're gonna throw it on the fire, right? No, we're gonna let it set on the counter, come to room temperature for about 45 minutes to an hour. Well, it's time to get the smoke rolling, it is. And today, what am I using? My favorite smoker of all, our Roughneck Smoker. We teamed up with the good folks at Hasty Bake to make a product that is entirely made in the USA. Everything it is. Today, we're gonna start with a base of Fogo hardwood lump charcoal. And I like to use the stuff that's in the big sack because it's bigger chunks, it is. But to that, after them get white hot, and I can't emphasize that enough, folks, you need to wait till this smoking wood down here is white hot, I mean glowing good. Then, when we get that brisket out here and put him on the fire, then we can add what smoke we want to go with it, okay? Today, I'm gonna to be teaming up with one of my favorite trees that I grew up with. It all happened during the cattle drive days. The cows in South Texas would eat the mesquite beans off the trees as they traveled north. They would have deposits, I think that's what you call them, and the mesquite beans would set in the fermentation of the cow manure and they would sprout. Then once commenced what? The mesquite tree. Now folks, we have a lot of them and I love to use them. Grilled a lot of steaks with them. Now if you're just using straight mesquite, it can get a little harsh at times. But to the mesquite, I am adding my favorite brisket wood to it because it really gives that bark a good red deep color that gets into, and that is just cherry wood. And I really like to use the bigger chunks of stuff. And I'll split this mesquite down a little to where it'll burn up pretty quick to start out with, but this is going to last longer. I do not soak it unless I'm using something like them flakes of wood, something like that. Well, it is time to get the beef on the smoker, it is. And you can see, as Shan was showing you there a while ago, after getting to set that 45 minutes, that sort of draws that moisture to the top and that seasoning and everything is glistening in the morning light. Remember I told you, we're going fat side up. And I'm gonna set him right here at dead center. There's a little bit of sizzle going on there, which is all right. Remember, we're fat side up. So let's go ahead and shut this one. Get her latched down tight, and you can see the tension spring that this has got on it. So then we're adding mesquite and cherry to it. And if you'd have put these in there to start, when we already had this fire going, these have been burned up when doing is no good. So I like to never add the smoke till I'm gonna put the meat right on it. And folks, we'll just have to mess with it for just a minute, and I don't mean mess with it in a bad way, just so I can know exactly how far to have these vents open and that vent back there closed just a little to where I can get that circulation. We're gonna keep an eye on it, get our temperature regulated just right. You can see the smoke is already starting to come out the back. We're climbing, we're at about 250, so we're gonna get pretty close. I'm gonna shut these just a tad. 
I like to keep it about the 250 range if I can, but a little over that sure ain't gonna hurt it. If you're using just a long grill, like I've cooked a lot of brisket on the Legacy grill that is made by Hasty Bake, and remember that's offset or what we call indirect cooking. I'll have me a big pile of coals on one end and I can then put the, my smoke there, but the other end where the brisket is setting is clean and empty. But they do have a vent on them too to where you can regulate that heat a little more. Now, if your lids and stuff don't latch completely tight down, you have to keep a close eye on that airflow to regulate the temperature. That's the only way you can do it. For the next four hours, we're just gonna keep an eye on it. We wanna let that internal temp get right there to about 160, and then we're gonna show you some more magic. Wrapping yes, I am. I have much presence to wrap. And unlike plastic wrap and a 40 mile an hour breeze, things ain't blowing away just yet. Hang on, but see that you talk about the breeze and here it comes. Well, we've been on about two hours and 40 minutes. Things are a little ahead of schedule here, mostly because that thing seals up so tight and that airflow is so good on it. I want you to check right there about the middle of the flat it was about 159. And we're gonna go fat side down here. So you can see the good color that we've already got in there and that's what we're after. But before we go any further in this process, we're gonna take our rib rub and give it just a little shaking of goodness on here. This has a little sweetness to it. And we're just gonna let that set here for just a minute. Let some of that seasoning sort of adhere to that meat. And then we're gonna get it wrapped up. When you wrap, and we got two sheets of that pink paper out here, go ahead and just pull that one over because we're wanting a double on the top of the flat side. Give it a tuck under. I like to turn it this way. And I can already tell you folks, this piece of paper is way too small. Uh -oh. So, get it wrapped up. We pulled off at 160 degrees, and then you've seen us wrap it to retain that moisture. It's also gonna block a little of that heat, gonna slow the cooking down. So, we're gonna stick her back in the smoker, still running at about 275, and we're gonna let it go for probably close to three to four hours, probably leaning more towards the three, till that internal temp is between 200 and 210. looking for something between 200 and 210 internal temp and we are there. So let's see what's happening in here. And folks, let me see, I'm gonna tell you, it's been six hours. Now most places you look, you're gonna cook a brisket for at least eight. You can see how that thing has sweated that paper and everything is looking good. You could let it just sit there and come to sort of room temperature on a big old sheet pan and try to keep people beat off of it until it got ready to eat. But folks, I sort of like to let mine set, if we can get it off there, in a good ice chest over here. Now, I will tell you, I'm not gonna suck that thing down tight because in them Yetis, that will continue to cook even more. But you could hold that brisket right there in that if you'd shut it down tight for hours upon hours. I want it to go ahead and sort of cool gradually as it will. That's why we didn't shut this down. In fact, Big, we'll give it just a little vent right here. But it's gonna let that condensation, that sweat come back off that paper to where everything is gonna be moist in there. And when we slice that, it'll be ooh, so good, it will. And I'm just going to pick this one up right here and I'm going to pull it just a little and it just sort of comes apart. 
And then I'm on what? I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Makes you do the what? You get so smooth and there you be like Frank Sinatra and then you just break down and then you think, oh my God, that stuff right there make you run, jump higher, run faster and jump over the moon. To get one this tender, most of the time I would have to cook 12 to 14 hours. Six hours on the money is all it was and then 30 minutes in that Yeti ice chest and pull it out. We are speeding up your cook time. We're saving you that moisture. We're giving you that good smoke to get that bark all the way back in there. This is what a smoker is supposed to do. But one other thing I'm gonna tell you is if you're gonna wrap meat that if you've already cut it, do not wrap it in aluminum foil because on the top or any place that it's touching that meat, it will discolor it. So always make sure that, like if you're gonna wrap something with foil, put some wax paper down or something under there first. But seeing as we have attendance today, I got them some fat meat. Oh my gosh, Big, you like to get my finger. Duker. Cletus, man, you can put this on anything you want, barbecue sandwiches, serve it just like that. Don't forget how easy it is to do. And as always, everything that we use today will be listed down there in the little links below. And don't forget about that new cookbook that's coming out. You can pre-order and won't be long. You'll be checking them dates because, hey, they're gonna be a book tour too. But it is with honor, pride, and great privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all our veterans who have kept that old flag flying back there. It is such a great thing, it is. To the rest of you, I'm just gonna tell you, y'all mean the world too as you do, because without y'all, we wouldn't have no YouTube channel. Y'all are great followers, y'all are great subscribers. Be sure and share the videos, give us a like, and God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the best tender smoked brisket trail ever. You hope you didn't see that as a booger. <laughs> <coughs> well, let's talk about seasoning. And folks, I cannot give you an ex, what I would call an excise. Is excise a word? That is not a word. Okay. Exact or precise. There you go. There you go, precise. That's what I was after, Shan. Yep. I might want to perform some kind of surgical procedure. Are you using hard word? Hard words are hard wood. Hard wood is a hard word, okay? <clears throat> I think I should bring this to y'all's attention because it is sort of weighed heavy on my mind that this would happen. Two filming days in a row now, Shan is still in them house shoes. Go ahead and show them, Shan. Still in the house shoes. But folks, we're really lucky because at least she got out of the house coat to do this one, so.